<laughs> Welcome, Angela. Hello, Angela. Hi, Angela. How are you? Now, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and the weed scene in Namibia? Um, yes, I surely can. Um, so my name's Angela, also known as Pikey Wrong Stockings to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've actually been a, a cannabis in Namibia for a cannabis, a cannabis activist. I've just made up a new name for what I am, a cannabis. Um, Nothing wrong. For, <laughs> for about probably almost five years now is when I started advocating for cannabis in Namibia. Um, I first did it very underground, um, just kind of focusing on on getting in touch with various government officials and trying to, um, you know, like encourage them to look at the potential. And over the years, I've just kind of become more and more vocal um, to try and get more support and educate the public um, on this plant. And so, yeah, so our, our cannabis scene in Namibia, I mean, there is a huge working underground cannabis economy market cannabis enthusiasts like many people are using this plant um, for all sorts of reasons in our country but it is very hidden and very underground does that mean that weed is crazy expensive in the Mabia? so i mean i don't know because I, I don't buy it yeah. um I'm not sure, but I can tell you what the the prices that people are charging when weed is low is absolutely ridiculous. Like I know some people who are selling weed in Namibia for 450 rand, which is equivalent to, um, well, yeah, it's South African rand and Namibian dollars are the same. It's like 450 rand a gram. Oh my God. Wow. Is it at least gas or is it shit? It's shit. Oh, I mean, there, you know, no ways. <clears throat> uh, people take the piss here because we have so you know we don't grow a lot of our own weed you know there's individuals who are growing some amazing weed um but it's not it's not a big big thing so a lot of it is coming in from our neighboring countries you know from it's coming from Lesotho, from swaziland from south africa from angola and these trucks are being stopped at the borders, you know, with cages and cages full of weed. So most of it is coming in um, from outside. And and I mean, there is, you know, I, it's for me, the insanity of some of these prices is absolutely insane, you know, and because we have so much space to grow it. Um, it shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah, how how hard are the cops there on weed? So, uh, yeah, this is this is an issue for us here, is the police brutality, you know. We have the drug squad and the police. Um, they are literally, like, just rogue. Like, they, they never show warrants. They always, there's always violence. Um, there's always bribery. There's always severe police brutality. So people are really, really scared. Um, and so obviously, you know, that inhibits people um, and prevents them from like growing or for speaking out. This is also, I think, one of the reasons why we don't have so much of a cannabis community, you know, and we see that together with the, with the Rastafari community um, the, and the Ganja users in Namibia, who's also the Rastafari community here. They were doing some marches and things. And people just don't show up, you know, there's no support, there's no like, uh, whenever we do something, even when Myrtle and Jules, bless his soul, um, came to Namibia and Gareth Prince, you know, we had maybe like 10 people that came. And it was people like... People are scared that there's undercover police who are going to be there and see them and like take note of faces and names and put a target on their backs and it's... Exactly, and the stigma. You know, we 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 seem to be a very very conservative country. So the stigma of oh, what's my community or my neighbors going to think? You know, but everyone is using it, um, but no one wants to publicly admit to it. And so this is a huge problem. You know, when we're like in the advocacy work of of like fighting this fight to get it legalized here or even just decriminalized, it's really because there is no public support. 
Yeah. And it's hard to educate because people too are, are too scared and intimidated to even be there to take in the information from them. It is, yeah. You know, it's really, I kind of feel like in Namibia, we're stuck in the dark ages a little bit um, when it comes to cannabis, um, you know, and I feel like almost five years of like really hard work of, you know, continuous advocacy. And I continuously try to do education in the media and, you know, of government officials. And it's all, you know, we've basically, not so long ago, um, the Medicines Regulatory Board informed me that they had put CBD, which was not actually, it, it's very gray area here exactly what CBD is, but a lot of the shops and the pharmacies started selling it. And so they're obviously not being arrested. You know, they have it on their shelves. They're selling CBD from South Africa and from America and who knows from God where else, um, but they're not being targeted or arrested. So it's like, you know, only individuals. Um, but then I was informed that CBD has now also been put into a schedule five um, next to cannabis, like a few weeks ago, um, you know, alongside heroin, wow. alongside pick. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, they're, they're, like in schedule four, a lesser schedule, we have like benzos and, and other way more addictive substances, you know, codeine as CBD was placed into Schedule 5, codeine was made freely available to be on the shelves. Wow. That's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Do you think that if our the South African laws change and become something reasonable, that that might help influence Namibia to sort of like catch up with the times? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's what you would think. Um, and also, you know, I have done presentations for the government officials. I've written recommendations for law reform as to why the law needs to change, you know. And essentially, I think that our politicians have their own vested interest in this. Um, I think what they want is licensing, you know, like the nice Canadian systems coming in, you know, like in Lesotho or in Zimbabwe, paying millions, paying them millions, growing and exporting, you know, and them profiting and, and no one else. Yeah, that's because, that's yeah. you know, because otherwise, otherwise things would have happened because the evidence <laughs> is overwhelming, yeah. um, it is. you know, for and for the potential, not just in terms of, you know, the fact that it's our human right, but in terms of creating industry. And actually, the, the last minister, the previous minister of justice, who now is sitting in jail for corruption, um, he said, you know, gave like a whole why we cannot legalize cannabis in Namibia in 2018 or 19. Um, but meanwhile, him and the cohorts of, of, of ministers who were all arrested for corruption had acquired themselves licensing in Lesotho to grow cannabis, you know? So this is what I mean, like our, yeah. you know, our government has vested interests. I was going to say, there's no hidden uh, or any backdoor government grows happening from with, with international investors there yet. Well, so in 2015, a license was issued to an Australian mining company that had a pharmaceutical subsidiary that was called Erin Resources, and they received a license. Um, and there is a lot of talk, like this is the thing, you know, people are scared to, I know of a few licenses that have been issued. Um, and. I also have some proof of that, but I need to be out of the country to be releasing that, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, so, but there is a lot of talk of that, you know, and also because, you know, in, in the cannabis advocacy activism work, you know, there's a lot of international connections, you know, and where Namibia is being mentioned, you know, in terms of licensing. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like fighting Goliath in this battle here. It really is. Um, because it seems no matter how we approach the government, it's, we're just not, you know, moving forward. We seem to be going backwards, backwards. actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It must be so frustrating. It is. It really is, you know. It's like all this hard work 
that's being put in. And also, you know, the fact that it's it's a very lonely battle, you know. Um, in that's It seems like in South yeah. Africa, there's big cannabis communities, you know, and the same in, in other places and people stand together and there's, you know, a lot more activists, you know, and there's a lot more input. And here it's, this is just not the case, you know, like the cannabis community is, is not very supportive. You know, yeah. even when that people get it. Invented- you know, even in South Africa in the beginning, there was a lot of trepidation on people like coming yeah. out of the closet. And the, the most vocal support really only came, honestly, after September 18th, 2018. Yes. Mm. The, when people changed. didn't feel like wow. they were going to be targeted. Mm. I mean, getting our petition signatures has been a mission because we have to have an ID number. I mean, after how many years? Yeah, yeah. We still we're on thirty-six thousand uh, signatures. So close to fourteen thousand. Out of how many millions of stoners in All our country? All we just need is one signature, and they won't yeah. use it's it against fear. you. It's, it's, yeah, it's the fear. fear. Exactly. The government uses the the fear of bullying us and kidnapping us and assaulting us and putting us in jail. Exactly. I mean, you were before you know, we started, and you said you feel like you maybe need to move yourself to somewhere safe so that you can actually vocalize with the government without having someone bashing down your door. Well, yeah, exactly. You know, because I've had that before, and luckily the universe protected me, and I wasn't at home, you know, but I've had various threats of arrest. And I just, you know, um, I'm a mother also, so for me that's like, a, you know, I have to, to do this from a, a safer Yes. Distance. Um, As a mom, yeah, I hear you and I feel you on that. It's yeah, it's crazy times, you know. For me, I'm just so I'm so mind blown, you know. For example, with this whole thing that happened when when um, codeine was released back onto our shelves, that you can buy it without prescription. I mean, That's I'm like, who the fuck makes these laws? You know, when the evidence is so clear about a, people a who are addicted to actual drugs. Yes, and we have so we have such high addiction rates in Namibia of this drug of, of codeine, you know. And we have no there's no social support, you know. Rehabs are insanely expensive. Addiction um, is treated as like, a criminal oh, issue, not a health issue. It is a health issue, you know, and the fact that we are still like uh, this is what I mean, you know, our government has vested interests because they know what the potential of this plant is, you know, and they, we see this when, when our ministers are going to get licenses in other countries. Um, exactly. And then tell us that we can't legalize it for our, you know, for our people's benefits. It's madness. Because no, only they can make money, not everybody can make money. But money aside, yeah. it's the human rights of it's, it all. Yeah, it's the human rights abuses because they're ab- abusing your human right to grow to, a plant and yeah. to use it as a, as a, a God-given yeah. medicine, you know? <clears throat> to use it for whatever reason. Whatever you reason. want, yes. Yeah. Is there a Namibian yeah. land race? So there is one guy that I know who who does work with the Namibian land race. Um, and I've been, you know, over the last few years, I've been trying to speak to the communities, you know, like the, the different uh, local communities here to try and find, you know, because I think it used to be very widespread, you know, there's there's so much, once you start talking to the elders here, you know, they are, they have this history with the plant and they know the recipes that you make the tea and they've used it, you know, and I mean, even like our first people here, the sun, you know, it's, it's, it's part of their spiritual plants. So there is, um, we do have a land race here. Um, I'm not sure how widespread it is, um, or how preserved it is at this point. I do know of one guy who has made somewhat of an effort to preserve it um, and is growing it, but I think it might be a hybrid as well. Um, but that's something, you know, that I would... Um, for me, this is also why I'm trying to draw more attention, you know, to, to Namibia and the cannabis scene here, because, you know, we have so much, like, land here, and it's we have so much sunshine. Um, and if we could start to focus on these kind of things, you know, like preserving the land race, looking at do we have one, you know, like really delving into the history. Um, but it's currently, you know, like it's like I'm doing this all alone and it's just way too much to try and take on. 
That's so if us. anyone watching this wants to get involved, please. Yes. So how can people get involved? Where do they find out more about you or support what you are doing down there? So, I mean, I'm basically doing everything from my, from, from my personal um, social media, which is Pikey Wrong Stockings, um, or in the newspapers, because, so I've set up an association um, with, with a, a, a group of people, um, you know, like-minded people who are passionate about cannabis, you know, and have also, you know, have, have worked with this plant and, so we've been trying to get this registered, but even just the name cannabis in Namibia is, is then becoming an issue, you know, to get anything registered. So we're at this hurdle now where we're trying to set up a, a website. So there's an official website, et cetera, but like the bureaucracy and all of these things, like this is what I mean, we're stuck in the dark ages here. Um, but so for now, people can just get in touch with me on Pikey Wrong Stockings on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and yeah, follow follow the work there. Get in touch, um, see how and if they want to support. Yeah, great, wonderful. And then, can I leave you with our question of the evening? Have you ever yes. been grilled to the maximum? I have. I have, like <laughs> so. So I'm someone who. I smoked cannabis for many, many years. I actually used to, and, and I don't think I've ever shared this on, on a social platform, but it's the hot box show, you know, it's the hot box show. So, um, to, well, I lived many years in India where I smoked a lot of good charas. And then I used to actually swallow hash from Morocco and take it to England. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I used to, uh, I used to love, smoking hash and then I went started working in California in the cannabis industry like 10 years ago well no I worked there for 10 years this was probably like 15 years ago already and I remember the first time I was there like smoking Californian you know weed bong after bong and then having an edible and I thought I was going to die literally <laughs> I was hanging with my head out of a caravan and just literally on a, on a cannabis farm and thinking that's it, I'm going to die. Um, so many times I'm super sensitive. Um, yeah, every time that I do, and because I don't really use cannabis anymore, you know, I just use it as a preventative for my migraines um, and for fibromyalgia. But whenever I do make edibles and I have to test them, I always, at first, everything's funny, funny, haha, ha, and then it like <laughs> blows my mind. So, yeah, what I a have story. many <laughs> Angela, thank you very much for joining us. It was wonderful to get an insight into Namibia. It always yeah, feels really like cool. uh, South Africa's a strange 10th province in a way. But it is, it's good to hear that there's something happening, and I, it would be nice to see the, the culture come out of the mm. closet. And we always have yeah. your back. Oh, thank man. you so much guys um it was really nice to be on here um awesome. good to have yeah. you it was a privilege for us thank to have you yeah. yeah we'll have to send you your t-shirt in the mail yeah. <laughs> i'm building up my collection we'll figure something <laughs> out uh, <coughs> So, guys, we'll put a link uh, to Angela's email in the description or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, please remember, like, share, subscribe, go vote in this week's poll. Have you been grilled to the max? To the max. To the max. <laughs> yes. To the five. Okay. And you guys? Nice. Cool. Great. Cheers, Angela. Thank you. Have you been grilled to the max, Buzz? Bye. Me? Yeah. <laughs>